Hello and welcome to Pseudocode. I hope you guys are doing fine. In this video, we are going to talk about some of the performance metrics. This is part one of a video related to performance. In this video, we'll discuss the concepts related to some performance metrics that are used to evaluate how good the system is working and performing. Those metrics are throughput, bandwidth, latency, and response time. Now these metrics, we are going to understand what do they mean and how they are evaluated, whether they should be high or low with respect to systems. I will use an analogy, like a real world analogy to describe all these metrics and what are the important points or factors about these metrics. And then in the next part, we will see how uh, different components like databases or applications or other instances are evaluated using these metrics. So that will be part two of the video. So now let's get started. Let me start with throughput. What is throughput? Throughput can be understood as some amount of work done in a particular time. For example, if you are say assistant to a chef in a particular restaurant and your task is to chop onions for that day. Now, if you are able to chop, let's say 20 onions in one hour, this is your throughput. However, if someone is relatively new than you and has not much experience in chopping onions that fast and that person is able to say chop 10 onions in one hour, the throughput of you is 20 and throughput of that person is 10. So you have double the throughput of that person because in the same amount of time, you are able to produce more output of work. Cool. Let's say there is a four lane, lane road from city A to city B. And some commodity like some vegetables and fruits have to be transported from A to B. Let's say there is one vehicle, one truck, which can transport 100 kg of fruits from A to B within an hour. Okay. And let's suppose 400 kgs of fruits have to be transported. So what can we do? And since this, this is a four lane road, every, if every truck travels on different lanes, then within an hour, 400 kgs of commodities could be transferred. So the throughput because of this four lane system of the transportation becomes 400 kg. If however, for some reason, these two lanes are reserved for smaller vehicles. In that case, what will happen? We would be able to move both the trucks T3 and T4 uh, on these two lanes. And due to some uh, resistance uh, reasons, it might be possible that all four trucks do not reach within an hour. They take slightly more than an hour, like 1.5 hour. In that case, the throughput would be low because in one hour, we are not able to transport 400 kgs. But however, if we remove all the constraints and four trucks can travel on two lanes and transport vegetables from A to B within an hour, 400 kgs of vegetable, we say that 400 kg per hour is the throughput of this these trucks. Okay, so this is the concept of throughput, the amount of work that is done in a certain amount of time. Now, how can the throughput of the system could be increased? One way is that the capacity of trucks is increased. They can carry 200 kgs. Now, if four trucks carry 200 kgs, in one hour, we are transporting 800 kgs of uh, commodity. That means we have doubled our throughput. Or instead of using trucks, if we say we use smaller vehicles, like instead of using four trucks, I use say eight small vehicles, which can which each can carry 100 kg of commodities, but they can travel from A to B hypothetically in half an hour. Now what will happen? The throughput has increased because now 800 kgs of items could be transferred from A to B within half an hour. So the throughput has doubled. In one hour, it will be 1600 kgs, given that we have so many vehicles. So this is how the concept of throughput with respect to time and the work that has to be done works. 
in system design throughput uh, is relevant when you have to understand how many uh, api calls are being served in a particular amount of time for example say there is a system which handles order placing and it can handle 100 orders getting placed within 30 minutes so the throughput of the system is 100 orders on the other hand there is a further sophisticated system which is a scaled well and it can handle 1000 orders within 30 minutes so for that particular uh, api or system the throughput is 1000 so I hope it makes sense, the concept of throughput. Next concept is bandwidth. Bandwidth comes into play uh, when we are dealing with uh, data getting transferred over networks, data getting transferred over connected networks on multiple locations. If you take example of Netflix, bandwidth is of huge importance because streaming has to happen over different locations simultaneously. So the amount of bandwidth those machines have, which can deliver and serve the data at such a high speed in such a small time, almost in real time. So bandwidth plays a uh, important role there. But what is bandwidth? I mean, you would understand from the network that given a certain network bandwidth, uh, only certain amount of data, like say 100 MB or 1000 MBs or like 2 GBs, N GBs can be transferred over a given uh, network with uh, if it supports that bandwidth. Okay, now let's see uh, this the same thing with the example of the uh, trucks and the materials getting transferred from here and there. In the previous example, we see that we had uh, two trucks that were transporting 100 kgs of uh, commodities in one hour. Okay, there is two lane, two trucks can move on these two lanes and we can transfer 200 kgs per hour. But if we have four trucks, it can transport 400 kgs per hour. So right now, and we have four trucks, let's assume. But suppose there is a restriction that at any given time, only two trucks of our company can transfer from A to B. You are not allowed to move more than two trucks on your lane at a time. So if T1 and T2 are traveling, T3 and T4 would have to wait for some reason. In that case, even if you uh, are able to supply a higher throughput, like 400 kgs, in one hour but the bandwidth is restricting you the lane is not allow allowing that much uh, that many trucks to carry the uh, commodities so you will end up having a throughput of only 200 kgs per hour why because you are constrained by the bandwidth on the other hand if this is if this increases to four lane the constraint stays same that one truck can go only on one lane but the number of lanes are increased in that case now again you're able to have a throughput of 400 kgs per hour why? Because the bandwidth has increased. So the point that I'm trying to make here is if you have higher bandwidth and you have resources for uh, to utilize that higher bandwidth and transport the data, you can have a higher throughput. However, if you have the resources to transport the data, but the bandwidth is low, then your throughput will be blocked or maxed out by bandwidth. For example, let's suppose uh, a case where bandwidth is higher. You have four lanes but you have only two trucks. In that case, your throughput will be maxed out at two trucks, 200 kgs per hour, because you do not have more trucks to flow data or, or to flow commodities through, the, through that bandwidth. In that case, your total performance of the system or the throughput of the system will be capped at 200 kgs per hour. So both things have to be there. If uh, it is possible that you have higher bandwidth, but your systems do not have enough resources to transport that much data, then also your system will perform less and it is possible that uh, you have enough resources but you don't have enough bandwidth in that case also the throughput will be capped because of bandwidth but if you have enough bandwidth and you have enough resources then you can have a very highly maximized performance usually in real world scenarios you have to adjust these factors in order to give maximum performance that your system can provide Third metric is response time. Response time is sometimes used interchangeably with latency. And it, it might be right in some cases, but usually it is, it is not. Both are a little different. So we will discuss latency afterwards, but uh, first let's focus on response time. So when uh, we say that our system is able to serve a thousand requests per second, that means uh, that uh, in one second, you're able to serve thousand requests and the time that an API is taking to respond is one second. So for example, you sent a request at T1 and you got the response at T2, where this is T1 second and T2 second. So you got the response within one second. So this is the response time of your API. Now you understand the concept of bandwidth and throughput. So let's suppose we have one GBPS of bandwidth 
the system's throughput is 1000 requests per second. Okay, and every request takes one second. And the data that is being transferred uh, through these 1000 requests over the 1 Gbps network, this is optimized. Like uh, this network's capacity is utilized, the bandwidth is utilized. Now what can happen is, suppose your API slows down. Instead of taking one second, it takes two seconds. Okay, even though you have bandwidth and even though you have multiple requests, but then your requests are taking time to respond. So in that case, you, you might not be able to support 1000 requests in a second because your request itself is taking two seconds. So maybe you're in two seconds, one request will be fulfilled. And if you have 1000 requests coming in within one second, all those 1000 wouldn't be completed. They will take two seconds to complete. So that means that even though you have throughput and even though you have enough bandwidth, but if your request itself is slow, the overall throughput of your system is going to get compromised. Let's go back to the example of trucks and see how, how this happens. So let's say that the bandwidth constraint is like four lanes. Every lane can have one truck at a time and you have four trucks. So you are able to give a throughput of 400 kgs per hour. You are able to give this throughput of 400 kgs per hour because your truck can travel from A to B in one hour. It has that much speed. Now what happens for some reason you have heavier trucks okay or something uh, goes wrong with the truck something goes wrong with the parts or maybe the truck is old or maybe uh, there is some issue with the driver or the speed whatever it is and the truck cannot travel at a speed to reach from A to B within an hour instead it takes two hours to reach. Now if it takes two hours to reach then what will happen all the trucks will reach from A to B in two hours. 400 kgs will be delivered because we have the bandwidth of four lanes, but it will be delivered in two hours. And hence, in one hour, the total throughput was 200 kgs. So that's what happens when you have the bandwidth, you have the resources to provide a throughput, but your response time is lower. So in that case, if your response time is not good enough, if it is not able to keep up with the given resources and the bandwidth, then also your overall throughput can go down. So I hope now you understand that in order to uh, give higher throughput, more number of requests served every second or every minute or whatever unit of time, you need to have a good bandwidth to support your resources. And you also need to have the speed of your resources, the, the way your applications are running, the way your code is running. It also has to be fast enough to give higher throughput. The intention and objective of all the systems is to have cost perform uh, is to reduce cost and increase performance. That means use minimal resources and give maximum performance or maximum throughput out of them in minimum amount of time. So you have to play with bandwidth uh, throughput and uh, time response time in order to maximize the performance of your system while also taking care of the cost that cost is as much reduced as possible. So that was a brief overview of different metrics like throughput, bandwidth, latency, response time, etc. The basic concepts and how you can understand and optimize your systems accordingly. In the next video, we will talk about how to use these metrics with different components of a system to measure how the system is performing and what to do in order to increase that performance. If you have any doubts or any questions, please feel free to add in comments. Till then, take care. See you in the next video. Thank you.